Thank you so much for taking the time to hear the powerful word of truth from Prophet Bishop H. Walker. By way of special announcements, join Prophet Walker at True Life Pentecost Church every second Sunday of each month in Atlanta, Georgia at 957 Metropolitan Parkway at 4.30 p.m. Also join in with True Life every fourth Sunday of each month in Charlotte, North Carolina at 300 North Tryon Street located at the Public Library of Charlotte. For further details, go to www.truelightpentecost.org and click on announcements for any current events. Thank you so much for supporting Prophet Walker and the True Light Ministry. Be encouraged and be blessed. You are now viewing Prophet H. Walker and True Light Pentecost Church. Those that are viewing and seeking after righteousness, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Identify who is of the true church and who is not. Not by our own uh, individual personal feeling, but by the revelation according to the word of truth which is recorded in the Bible for a living testimony forever. Now, I want to kind of just open up in the book of Ephesians. in their heart to serve God in the beauty of holiness and are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Paul said it's the power of God to salvation to everyone that believeth. Uh, you may be seated. Please, brother. Now I want to uh, speak tonight uh, I think a very important uh, subject text and that is the true church of God and how by scripture we can uh, identify who is of the true church and who is not. Not by our own uh, individual personal feeling, but by the revelation according to the word of truth, which is recorded in the Bible for a living testimony forever. Now, I want to kind of just open up in the book of Ephesians and uh, chapter five, and let's jump right into verse uh, 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Yes. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Now, again, if, if we were uh, to bring uh, uh, Paul's uh, teaching to a a perfect understanding, we will focus in on verse uh, 7 and 8. Be ye not therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes uh, in a doxomy's ignorance, uh, but now ye are children of the light, so therefore he tells you to walk or live as people who have knowledge. Children of the light, people who have divine knowledge. Verse 10. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Let's, let's include this with verse 9. 
For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Goodness, righteousness, and truth. Uh -huh. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather Now we them. come to the knowledge of the truth, because we are trying to prove what is acceptable or what is favorable with God. All of our, all of our earthly journey is to try to have a favorable relationship with God. And we do this by having a knowledge of Him, and thereby we prove whether or not we are saved or whether or not we are not. So again, the Bible is our roadmap to eternal life, and we cannot allow for anyone to try to dissuade us or distract us. Now, I said we're going to focus in on the true church of God. Let's go jump right to Acts, uh, the book of Acts. Amen. Now, Acts of the Apostles yes. shows a clear illustration of the knowledge that God had given to the apostles to reflect later in the Bible. So we're trying to identify what church is the right church? Is it the Baptist? Is it the Methodist? Is it the Catholic? You know, uh, some teach that the Catholic Church was the original church. How can that be? Come on, come on, come on. The Catholic Church was established at the Council of Nicaea 325, and our church, the True Light Church, was established in the book of Acts, second chapter. And, and that was prior to the Nicene Council of 325. Amen, Nicene Council came approximately 50 years after the death of the last apostle. So we are going back to the time of the Apostle Peter primarily. Uh, in Acts the second chapter, let's jump right into verse uh, 35. Until I make thy foes thy, foes thy footstool, therefore let all the house of Israel know surely that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now here Peter's preaching a sermon, keep in mind. He's preaching a sermon. He's preaching actually to uh, the Jews. But we find out later on, it's not only to the Jews, but it's also to the Gentile. Yeah. Read. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Now the apostles were there, but only Peter was given the keys to the kingdom. Amen. Now here's a man who at the crucifixion denied Jesus three times. Yeah. And the third time he cursed. He said, I don't know that man and use some explicit language. Showing you how God can use any heart that's sincere and has a stubborn conviction to follow him once there has been a transformation. Yes. Now, people can talk it, but are you willing to transform your life to follow God and then hold your integrity with God even when things are going against you, when friends turn against you, when loved ones and relatives turn against you, are you still going to defend the true like church? Amen. Or will you get discouraged and say, well, uh, no, I used to be, but uh, uh, I, I've, I've come to a higher knowledge now. Yes. Well, we'll find out. We'll find out about that higher knowledge. Read. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. They asked Peter what to do to be saved. And Peter told them to repent. And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For now the salvation plan, the water baptism in the name of Jesus, is not to people who purposely or want to be baptized. It is a mandatory statement. It's for everybody who wants to be saved. Repent and be baptized every one of you. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. I said not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but in the name of Jesus Christ, because Jesus is the testator to the will. He's the one that died at Calvary's cross. Uh, he was the Father in creation, Son in redemption, and Holy Ghost in dwelling. But nevertheless, there's still only one God. Amen. Now, when God took upon himself a human body to go to the... Uh, to go to Calvary as a sacrificial lamb. You have to understand now, this is complicated. The human body died, but God didn't die. All right. yeah. But that human body that the spirit dwelt in, that human body had to die, literally had to die, or we wouldn't have no right for redemption. Amen. Now, you know, God required a human sacrifice this time. Animal sacrifice wouldn't do. He wanted a human sacrifice, but the human sacrifice 
had to be a person, a person unblemished, yes. without sin. So God couldn't find nobody. He took upon himself a human body and became the sacrificial lamb. Mary gave birth to the human body. Mary did not give birth to God. Amen. And I want the Catholic Church to fully understand it and stop going around saying, Hail Mary, uh, 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 full of grace, Father of God. Amen. God ain't never had a father. Amen. Jesus ain't never had a father. Right. And Jesus ain't never had no mother. Maybe you better get me Hebrews again, 7th chapter. Jump right into verse 3 because somebody, you don't go away if you two are scratching their head. Okay, praise the Lord. Without father, without mother. Without with, father, without mother. Without descent. Without have, descent. Have now, any, you understand what descent means? In other words, he, he, he didn't have an end. In order to have an end, you got to have a beginning. So therefore, he didn't have a beginning or an end. It's like an endless circle. You can't find where did it start. If the circle is perfect, you can't find where it started. Jesus is more than the end of the circle because he's, he's from everlasting to everlasting. Read. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Made like unto the Son of God. Never had a father or mother. Well, wait a minute. If he's the Son of God, did you see he didn't have a father? Amen. Amen. So I told you, Son of God is a complex term. It literally means God incarnate yes. or God in a personality form, God in bodily form. So again, now we, we, it's not complex to understand. It's not confusion. Like unto the Son of God. But he didn't have a father or mother. So how could he be the Son? He became the Son incarnate. He, had, he created the human body for himself because uh, in... John's Gospel, first chapter, all things were made by him, and without him was nothing made that was made. Amen. So Jesus made everything. He made the human sacrifice for himself. I'll be that's Hebrews 8 chapter. All right, now I want to cut right back to uh, Acts, the second chapter, and pick up in verse, uh, read verse 38 again. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, remission of sins means removal of sins. Amen. Now, in order for you to get uh, saved, you've got to have your Adamic sins removed yeah. or sins you're automatically born into. They've got to be uh, remitted for the Bible record. And the only way that you can do that, you've got to be water baptized. Now, I know today it's not popular to teach water baptism. These mega churches, well, how are we going to baptize all these people? I don't know. Maybe you better go to the ocean or somewhere. Right. But you better baptize them, and you better baptize them in the name of Jesus, not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, which is his title. Because salvation, I believe the scripture said, neither is there salvation in the other, for there's no other name under heaven whereby you must be saved. Salvation can only come in the name. But if the name is hid from the people, and the devil did, I mean, he did a, a magnificent trick if I would give him his due. When he said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So the name is hid from the people. Therefore, they can't be saved. Because you have denied the saving name, which is Jesus, which makes the baptism legal and makes the salvation legal. If your heart has been converted, yeah. not just by being water baptized, but there has to be a, a change, spiritual change in you. If there's a spiritual change in you, it will automatically show outwardly. Right. So when you hear them people say, well, God, he, he looks at the end, but man, he don't care about makeup or this. He, he don't look at the outward appearance. If the inward man is changed, it's going to prove by the outward appearance because we just shared over an Ephesian letter proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Amen. You can't prove nothing if you don't have a humility of heart to be obedient Amen. and submissive to the plan. All right, read. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God now shall Now the far call. off is talking about the Gentiles now. Even as many as the Lord thy God shall call. It, praise the Lord beyond Venus. If God called them, they got to get saved. Amen. Read. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Yeah. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And now the notice they that gladly received that sermon. Yes. Not everybody that was there received it. 
when the altar call went out to get water baptized, there were some who didn't. All right. But those who gladly received, I like that part, gladly received. Mm -hmm. They didn't just receive it because I don't want to go to hell. They gladly received right. the word. Right. They wanted to be saved. Right. They wanted to be converted. They wanted to be changed. Read. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Now the 3,000 souls that were added to the church that day remained steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. Now keep in mind, Peter was establishing the New Testament church, building it up. Paul went on and built it up a little bit further. Yeah. But when you come to the latter rain in the last days, the church is in rapid decline now. You don't build it up. You're in decline. You're trying to hold what you got. Praise the Lord. Stranger's gate, narrow the way that leads the light, few there be that can find it. Uh, Isaiah prophesied in the second chapter about the remnant, yes. the remnant church, those who escape. So again, we are the few that have purpose in our heart to see God's face in peace. And brothers and sisters, the spirit of unbelief is so, is so pronounced now until... I tell you, you'd be surprised if there are people set up in church that don't even believe in the Bible. Amen. Or they, they'll believe in what they want to believe, Amen. but the part they don't want to accept, they don't believe. Amen. Amen. You can't take the part you like and the part you don't like. Amen. Scripture has no private interpretation. Amen. you got to take the Bible as it is perfectly instructed or taught to you, and then you got to prove it by a lifestyle. You can't talk it. you got to live it. Amen. Read. Hallelujah. And with many other words, he testified his Lord, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. And they had gladly received his word, were baptized on the same day. There were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Yes. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Now, fear came upon every soul. When, when Peter told Ananias and Sabias to sell that house and give them money, back to the kingdom so he could do some work. They lied to Peter. But notice what Peter said. Why have you lied to the Holy Ghost? All right. All right. They lied to Peter. But the Holy Ghost was in Peter as a representative of the kingdom on this earthly plane. Amen. Now, Peter, for some reason, he didn't say, well, we're going to pray for you. Peter pronounced a death sentence on Ananias right there on the spot. What the Bible says, for fear. Sometimes you've got to set up something so that it can catch hold to a person, and sometimes the only way you can get a person's attention, you've got to put some fear in them. Amen. I wonder sometimes why you hear the thunder, and all of a sudden you see that big lightning. Yes. And don't tell me on, if it's now. close by, you know. Now. Wow. Amen. Goodness. Amen. Don't tell me. It, oh, oh, well. No, no. Uh -uh. You know that there's power of death if that lightning bolt gets too close. And that's why when you hear the thunder and you see the flash, you flinch. I mean, if you're human. Amen. Amen. Let's not sit up here and lie. Thank you, Jesus. This is to show a fear, and when Peter pronounced death on them, they dropped dead at the apostles' feet. Mm -hmm. Now the church was gathered around. Amen. Now you mean, might have been somebody was might have been thinking, but I, I guarantee they changed their thought pattern. <laughs> Hallelujah. Fear came upon all of them, the Bible said. Yes. So I'm saying, brothers and sisters, sometimes, now they ain't going to teach this in these uh, uh, non-denominational churches. Because they teach prosperity and God loves everybody and God wants you to be rich. God wants you to have this and have that. I told you uh, Fred K. Price, one of the biggest hypocrites that ever lived, yeah. bought a Maserati. This was about 15 years ago. He said, I want y'all when you leave church, go out and look in the parking lot and see my Maserati. He said, now, that's because I got faith and you can have one if you got faith. But if I'm opening up approximately 7,500 envelopes every day yeah. and a minimum, and I think he was bragging about some doctor was paying $2,500 a week in ties. Mm. So you, you just say a minimum of uh, $25, $30 envelope Amen. every Sunday. Come on now. I guess you could have a Maserati. That's right. <laughs> Amen. 
and a Learjet too. So again, people use faith and they put it in the, in, in the wrong perspective. Faith ain't got nothing to do with what you got in your pocket. Do you know that? Faith is when God tells you you don't have that. By his strife, you are healed, Amen. and you feel the pain and, and look at the situation. You say, but God shall me. Praise yeah. God. And you stand up, shake your shoulders, praise God, and then press on to the house of God. Yeah. This is faith. Faith means I believe in God when I don't have nothing tangible to show for it, yeah. but I got faith in God. Amen. That's why Job was able to get the victory, and God put it in the Bible for a reason to show people of unbelief. Here's a man who stood by faith and lost everything. Amen. All right. And God would never put you through what he put Job through because he knew you couldn't take it. Amen. And I believe he said, I won't put on you more than you can bear. Amen. But Job stood the tests and, 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 and God, uh, the devil told say, uh, God, I can't bother him because you got, you got some protection around him. And I know it. And God said, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to move that protection and go ahead and attack his body. But his soul belonged to me. Amen. Oh. In other words, no matter what he's going through, he's still going to come through it because his soul belongs to me. Amen. And he went through suffering, and I'm talking about a real story. He suffered and lost everything, and suffered and lost everything. But he still held on. I'm trying to tell you, church, you got to develop something nowadays because in the, especially in the Pentecostal church, we're so small, and we're getting smaller and smaller as we approach the end. You got to have something to cause you to have some staying power. And if you ain't got enough word, I'm talking about down inside of you. You come here for some kind of show, and when you leave out of here, you ain't thinking about what the prophet said. Or at least not most of it. But you got to take all of it. Now, Peter preached that sermon on the day of Pentecost and told them what to do to be saved. Now, I want to pick up in verse 43. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Yes. And all that believed were together, and had all things common. And so all that believed were together. Yes. There was no division in the church. Amen. The church is not divided. Amen, prophet. And I said before, if you go to a church that is not teaching the Bible, I will say true like you're in a false church. Because the church is not divided. Yeah. And the reason why I say true light is the true church, check, check, check my record. Amen. Check what I have preached from day one. Amen. From Amen. the time I was at the YMCA come on, come on. years ago. Amen. Before some of y'all were born. Before most of y'all was born. Hallelujah. I have never changed. Amen. I always believed when God gave him the revelation that nothing wrong with a woman preaching if God called you to preach. That's right. If, if God called you to preach, you better preach. Right. The truth will always set a person free if they have enough backbone to hold on to the truth when you hear it. You gotta do something about it when you hear it. You gotta lock that thing up because again, in this evil time, brothers and sisters, they'll persuade you, and like I said before, soon they leave true light, first thing they do is take that head cover off and they will not throw it in the trash. They'll put it in the drawer till they get enough confidence in about six, seven months, then they're, oh, what is this? So, uh, oh, that was a part of a cult. Uh, what is a cult? No. Any religious group can be designated a cult. That's but it's strange they won't call the Catholic Church a cult. Is it called they too big? They don't dare call them a cult. Who the Pope's come to town in every network. CBN and all, CNN and all, CBS and MSNBC. Oh, they have their representatives there. You got to get, get, make sure you get a close-up of the Pope. I've been here for a long time. Ain't nobody ever wanted to come and photograph me. And I'm telling the truth this Bible. And the Pope, when he, one of them told the truth about uh, same-sex marriage, mm -hmm. and they heard up and got rid of him. Did not tell y'all yeah. when he made that statement? Uh, he was against same-sex marriage. I said he ain't gonna last long. I don't think he lasted a year. What was his name? Pope uh, Benedict. 
They heard of him say, what? Well, oh, oh, he stole some money from the bank. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got to steal for? Right, Captain got their own bank. Yeah. Their own bank, right? He got out of line. And just like they're doing now in uh, Malawi. Yeah. They put so much pressure and pressure. Now the prime minister there now say he's for same-sex marriage. That's right. Pressure. Brothers and sisters, there's going to be pressure put on this church right here. And if you ain't got some backbone, you'll yield and give in. When they put the squeeze and start putting the squeeze and tell you, uh, you got to sign this people, you're going to lose your job. And you start looking around, wow, lose my job. Well, the Bible says he wise a certain harms his door. So you're going to throw scripture back at Jesus. Come on, brother. Amen. You got to learn how to stand. When all about you is falling apart and everyone seeming is turned against you, you got to learn how to stand because it's you and Jesus. Now, y'all, hear me tonight. Hear me, Chris. There's going to be some tests and trials that will come your way and will make you scratch your head and make you doubt God. And sometimes you be so troubled in your spirit, you get on your knees to pray and can't pray. I know. Sometimes I had to force myself to stay. Yes. Stay down there. Amen. What's wrong with you? Devil, get behind me. In the name of Jesus. Praise God until I can finally do you get a breakthrough. We are wrestling against a real flesh. And the flesh is real. We ain't changed yet. And there's always is going to be a warfare between the Holy Ghost in you and that flesh. But you've got to always let the Holy Ghost be your lead and your guide. Always. Paul said, think on these things, which have things of good, which have things of a, a good report. Think on these things. You got to learn, meditate on the Lord all the time. Yes. You got to think positive on the Lord all the time. You cannot let certain things in, in, in the natural persuasion come up. Amen. I said and taught against car notes. Right, I know what I'm doing. Right. You get a car note, you got to pay for it. Yes. You go to corporate structure and get an apartment, you got to pay for it. Yes. Now you got a car note. Apartment, electric. You mean to tell me there's something wrong when the leader said give that money to Shiloh? Amen. Amen. Where am I wrong? All right. I'm living down the road. All right. Don't pay that car note, they'll take that car. Trust me. Don't pay that monthly note to corporate structure, they will put you out yes. with 99 children. Amen. And half of them babies. Amen. Who am I going to stay? Don't look at me. I just work here. Okay. I just work for the company. <laughs> yeah, but you the one that went and got the, the order. They don't care about people. God cares about people. And he sends a leader to try to show you that there are difficult times. Here. Now, I know that when certain people, when you get on fixed income, you look past that. But everybody's not on fixed income. Amen. What about those who are out of work for over a year? Amen. What about those who are out of work for almost two years? Right. Oh, well, they're supposed to stay at Miracle Hill. Not if you're part of True Life. Amen. You don't worry about it. You're going to live in, in a decency. And you're going, if you, maybe you don't like the menu at Mission One. Fine. Right. Don't eat. <laughs> well, they tell you like when we went to the Army. Amen. Don't eat it. Amen. But if you get hungry, you're going to eat it. Come on. And sure enough, man, after a while, it started taking pretty good. <laughs> you know how I know? I ain't never missed a meal. When, that, when it comes time for meal time, man, I ain't never missed a meal. But the first week, oh, I ain't we eat this. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> you get hungry enough. Come on, man. I'm showing you, brothers and sisters. Be thankful for what God gives you. And never try to look beyond what God gives you because you don't know what lies beyond the bend. There are difficult situations can come up. I tried to share about you. God got an insurance plan for the church. Yes. Should he tarry? Insurance plan. You ain't got to worry about somebody maybe putting you in a nursing home. Come on. Oh, you, oh, you're in charge to run out. Amen. What you gonna do with me? You leaving here? 
Mm. The government don't care two cents about people. That's right. I just found out they raised up that baby restraining seat up to three hundred fifty dollars now. God forbid. And that ain't nobody heard of it. what? I thought you were supposed to vote. <laughs> That's what the Constitution says, but they don't follow the Constitution now. Amen. They do what they want. But you know what? Because people allow the corporate structure system to do whatever they want to them. That's why they make the brothers work on Sunday. Oh, you got to work this Sunday. Well, I can't. I'll be in Atlanta. No, you got to work. It's not optional. It's mandatory. But I can't do it. Fine. Don't be here. They'll fire you and get reaching that basket where they got 90,000 and pull another one and put it in your place. But when you turn to God and you trust in God, let God be the author and finish your faith. Okay. All right. You making it work? All right. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell Jesus about it. Right. Amen. Amen. But go to work. But still tell Jesus about it. And, and Jesus is already working the thing out. Amen. That song, Jesus can work it out. Yes. And he will work it out. It may not be day after tomorrow, or next week, or next month, but he's going to work it out. Yes. But church, you got to know that you in the Acts 238 church is the only church recognized by this Bible. And anyone who's not a part of the Acts 238 is not in the household of faith. Amen. Amen. And the Stabbers on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2nd chapter, verse 38. And then they remain steadfast in the Apostle Doctrine. Now give me Ephesians, little, little, little uh, fourth chapter, little, uh, I think on the fifth chapter. Little protection here. Jump right into verse. Did we, did we, did we, we didn't deal with verse 6, did we? Yeah. Yeah. All right, read it again. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Uh -huh. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for you were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Walk as children of the light. Uh -huh. for, the, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Now watch. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. You can't have a relationship with people who are not of the household of faith. It, you, can, you can't do it. Oh, but that's that's not love. It's Bible. Now you call it love or hate or whatever you want, to, but I said it's Bible. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather correct them. Now, again, this is to protect the integrity of the church. First Corinthians, Paul wrote, said it's just about the same thing. You have to come out and be separate. You cannot be entwined with the rest of these churches and these people. Uh, someone told me the other night that uh, one of my enemies got someone to take them and show them where I live. Well, well what's the big deal? I ain't never lived in no mansion. Was <laughs> why are they interested in where I live? Yeah. And why is someone interested in showing someone who hates me where I live? Except to walk together. They got to be in agreement. But if you in agreement with them, then you better be in agreement with someone who don't like Jesus. Because Jesus loves me. Amen. Oh, hell, I know what I'm saying. Hallelujah. I know what I'm saying. Things I've been through, many would have turned their backs out. Now I don't want no part of this. Let me sit in the back. And maybe had I known could see the future out here. And I'm going to know, Lord, thank you, but I'm going to sit in the back. Amen. Amen. But when God puts a call on you in your life, right. ain't nothing for you but stand up right. and trust in him and do exactly what he has called you to do, and that's to preach the truth and learn how to live by what you are preaching and let your life story be a witness against all those lies that will come against you. Amen. And when you do this, brothers and sisters, you'll be exactly the preacher that God has called for in these evil times. No, they're not going to like you. But you've got to understand 
they didn't like Jesus right. at all. Yeah. And they done far more to him than they're going to do to me and you. Amen. They nailed him to a tree. Yeah. Even when the governor said he ain't done nothing wrong. Amen. They made him yeah. crucify him. Yeah. You ever thought about that? On, they made the governor. And matter of fact, he refused to do it. He sent him back to uh, Herod. Herod yeah. So well, this is your problem. I don't want nothing to do it. This is your problem. But they sent him right back to the Romans and said, no, but you have the jurisdiction. Yes. <laughs> kind of punishment. That's your, that's your problem. Finally. He said, well, do what you want to. Mm -hmm. I wash my hands. Yeah. And that's all they wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. And took an innocent man, yeah. nailed his hands and arms and wrists to a tree and put that thing up in the ground and left him there. And he had never done anything wrong. So brother and sister, I'm trying to tell you, he, but he did tell the truth. Amen. And the Pharisees didn't like that. Amen. Now I'm telling the truth and I'm telling any Pharisees, I don't care how mad you get, Amen. I'm still going to tell you the truth. Thank God. <laughs> so we know, we know, we know the true church. You got to be water, water baptized in Jesus' name. And you got to be obedient to the leader. Amen. Now, I don't go around pronouncing death on nobody. But I tell you what you must do right, in order to be a part of the church so that the church can be viable and do whatever the vision the leader have for the church. Amen. That way we can be for each other. And those who are down, we can pick them up. Amen. Those who are way up here, say, God, don't worry about being way up here. God put you up here so you can help somebody down here and lift them back up. But nobody can be independent and live an independent life in the house of faith. This is not a Baptist, it's not a Methodist church, and I ain't going to let nobody change this into a Methodist or a Baptist church. Amen, Father. that's straight. Yeah. And you don't come when you want to. Amen. You don't pay, uh, well, 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 I, well, I just pay my 10%. No, you're going to pay your third Sunday yeah. or right, answer to me. Amen. Well, I had another bill, but I told you about bills. I already told you about that. Amen. Why give it to the devil? Corporate struggle, why give that money? And we're, what we're trying to do, why do it? Amen. Praise God. Let's learn. I'll be obedient. And let's learn how to obey leadership and instruction. Peter preached that sermon, and he established the Acts 238 church. We are the remnant of the Acts 238 church right today, and I thank God for it. Thank God for this Bible class tonight. Amen. If you have any confusion as to what is the true church, read the second chapter. Thank you so much for taking the time to hear the powerful word of truth from Prophet Bishop H. Walker. By way of special announcements, join Prophet Walker in True Life Pentecost Church every second Sunday of each month in Atlanta, Georgia at 957 Metropolitan Parkway at 4.30 p.m. Also join in with True Life every fourth Sunday of each month in Charlotte, North Carolina at 300 North Tryon Street located at the Public Library of Charlotte. For further details, go to www.truelightpentecost.org and click on announcements for any current events. Thank you so much for supporting Prophet Walker in the True Light Ministry. Be encouraged and be blessed. Love Talk Radio.